Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View. I make the views table relatable. I try to relate it to our everyday lives. We got a lot to talk about, so come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, welcome back everybody to the podcast. I'm so glad that we're back together. So uh, I just really enjoy it. You know, y'all, I, I even though this is just a hobby for me, I will say that When it's time for me to do my hobby, I get a natural surge of energy, even when I'm extremely tired, because I truly enjoy podcasting and I love The View. And if it weren't for y'all, I would have absolutely no one to talk to about it because no one in my real life cares. They don't watch the show. Uh, They've tried and they've just said, "Mm -mm, can't do it, (laughs) you know. And so, you know, it kind of is what it is. And none of my friends watch the show. And um, so it's just really, really wonderful to be able to connect with you, who, who's someone who loves the show too. And when I talk about, you know, Whoopi or Sunny, or we talk about Joy, Aunt Joy, you know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, because you love that show too. And you love the women on that show. So thank you so much for, for all your support and supporting the podcast and, and listening and all the things you do. Okay. Now, if you're new, you've got questions. You want to know what the music is because it is the bomb. Okay. Yeah, check the description box. I promise you, no matter where you're listening to my voice, there are answers for you, for all your questions that you probably have in the description box. Now, let's move on to what I want to talk with you about today. I wanted to make an evergreen podcast because, listen, we're just on number four. <laughs> we They've chemistry tested now four women uh, live on the air, The View has. This is the person they're trying to find who's going to fill that seat that Meghan McCain vacated the conservative seat permanently. And so, listen, guys, we got a long way to go because season 25 really just started, okay, in September. We're just in October. So we got to go all the way to the summer. So golly knows how many women, y'all, we're going to wind up having to judge and say, okay, is she the one? Is she the one? What do we think as viewers? And so what I've been doing is each time a woman completes her her job interview, I come to you and I give you a a seven point at this point, seven point um, uh, critique of her performance. And I'm stacking her up against seven things, seven things. Okay. And um, what I want to do is instead of having to review these things every single time we we come together, I just want to have a podcast I can point all the new listeners to and say, hey, go listen to this podcast. I play the clips. I do all that over there uh, so that we can kind of streamline our reviews. Okay. Now, some people don't think it's necessary to really explain some of these things on the seven point list. For instance, number one is she has to be generally likable. They feel, well, that's, isn't that self-explanatory? And my answer is no, because the truth is what you may think is generally likable in a person's personality could be completely different than what I think is generally likable or vice versa. You know, you may have more criteria. I may have less or vice versa. So because we're all different and we have people listening literally all around the world, different ages, different stages of life, some of us have more experience uh, in working with people, dealing with people than some of you guys who are younger. Like if you're 19, you may be on your first you know, major career or maybe even your first job or you just got out of college. So you haven't worked with a whole lot of people to kind of know in general, what makes up a generally likable personality. And so that's why I want to explain some of these things. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Number one, no matter who the woman is, no matter her age, you know, doesn't matter, no matter she's got a real valuable last name or she worked her way up to where she is in life, it doesn't matter. So she has to have a generally likable personality. Okay, y'all. Now, what that means to me is this. After two days, if I can't say, hmm, she all right, she did not have a generally likable personality. Now, generally likable personality, in my view, is someone who can generally get along with most people. You know, there are going to be always people we don't get along with or we can't. But generally, she's easy to talk to and talk with. Generally, you know, she knows how to laugh at herself. She she didn't take it so seriously. Um, and generally, okay, she works well with a team, okay? I think most of us can agree that if a person, if a woman rather has a 
introverted personality, she wouldn't do well on a job like this, right? And if she had a, if she was a loner, you know, this kind of job wouldn't be for her, right? Because on this job, you have to collaborate with other people day to day to day. And not just at work, but outside of work, because, you know, they have to talk to each other about a lot of these things going on. And to foster a good, healthy work environment, you know, it's necessary that you do team building activities like go out to lunch together, go to a movie together or, you know, you know, whatever they do there in New York Broadway together, you know. And so these types of personalities are great. You know, they may be great people, but they don't function well in these types of jobs. OK, so generally likable. Number two, the woman has to have chemistry with every single woman who makes up the core panel. The core panel right now, because it could change at any moment, is Whoopi, Sarah, Sunny, Joy, and Anna. Five. Five women are the core panel. She needs to have chemistry with every single one of them. We've been there, done that, right, y'all? When the woman, we could tell she really only had chemistry with one person, or she only got along with one person, but everybody else hated her, or and vice versa. Like, that's where it got with men. Megan, you know, Megan, um, with her unlikable personality, okay, and then her mistreatment of people and her thinking she was superior because of her last name, you see, that isolated her from people. Most people, including the woman you're listening to, don't like people like that because people like that, you're like, you know, we're all equals, you know. Now, how I got this job is very different than how you got it, but we're still, we're here now. You get what I'm saying? And so, People that tried to befriend her, she wound up stabbing them in the back. She stabbed Sonny in the back. We've talked about that many times. Um, But ultimately, her and Sonny were able to work through it. And it it winded up the only, you know, ally she had was Sonny. Nobody else could stand her. She had alienated Whoopi. And Whoopi, we all remember Whoopi used to be like baby this and honey this, but it got to a point where Whoopi couldn't even stand her. And so, and Whoopi's the most laid back of the entire group. And so, you know, again, chemistry is key, guys. Now, what I'm looking for during these two days is that initial connection, which is very visible. Chemistry is is on a deeper level than just generally liking someone, right, guys? So number one and number two are completely different, okay? You can generally like somebody but not have chemistry with them. Chemistry is a soul connection. It's it's some it's like you feel like you've known the person your whole life, but you've only known them for two hours, you know, actually. You get what I'm saying? And when a woman has chemistry with the group, we can see it. Like when Anna's there, we can see it. They all have chemistry. They rip off each other, they kind of, you know, play off each other. I mean, they're just they're just great together. Their personalities mesh. They're all different women, but they have chemistry. So chemistry is important. Now, chemistry can't be manufactured. I don't want somebody to come on there and try to pretend like she's the everyday girl and everybody likes her. Uh, No. (laughs) So chemistry can't be manufactured, but it can grow. But so all I'm looking for in these first two days is the initial connection because it will be visible because chemistry is something deeper than generally liking each other. Okay. The third thing, guys, this is so important. The woman has to do the job of the conservative or else why is she there? (laughs) Okay. You know, listen, in a moment, we're going to listen to Brian Tedda describe what the conservative needs to do. He used a specific phrase. Most of you know what it is. So I'll go ahead and tell you, he said an opposing view. The person needs to present an opposing view. Now we're not talking about every little thing they talk about. She has an opposing view. What we're talking about is that, on these major issues where Democrats and Republicans, because that's what, you know, even though uh, Sarah is an independent, most of the panel, I think, leans more democratically. I think we can all agree with that. They're more liberal. Even Sarah does. She leans more that way. And even Anna, as a Republican, she leans more to, you know, um, the liberal side of things. That doesn't make her a liberal. It just means her viewpoints happen to align with that. OK, but, you know. On these major issues where the two major parties in, the, in this country uh, disagree on things, she needs to present the conservative view again, or else why is she there? Because if she's, she's going to come there, although a conservative, but yet her viewpoints on all these major issues are the exact same as um, the rest of the women, she, there's, it totally, I mean, that's not really interesting, guys. Let's be real about it. Now, I don't want fights. 
and I don't want drama, but you want to know what makes for a good show is when you have someone who can present an opposing view. And it's what they gen, genuine, genuinely think. You know, I'm not saying they need to bring on someone who's just going to do what Megan did, which is just give a bunch of talking points. And she didn't even really believe those things. The, the, the fourth thing here, she has to be a good conversationalist conversationalist, not a great conversationalist, but a good one, y'all. You want to know why? Because this show, it doesn't just focus on politics. It focuses on focuses on pop culture now, and they're focusing more and more, right, y'all, on a lot of these pop culture, or we should say lighter hearted subjects. And if we get another Megan McCain, and I hate to keep using Megan as the example, but guys, I mean, I guess I could use Abby Huntsman. She was, she wasn't as bad as Megan, but you know, you know, she was pretty much a dud on the show. She didn't add much to the conversation. She didn't elevate the conversation in polit- political conversation or pop culture conversation. But when they make these transitions, she can't be like, oh, I don't know who that is. Or, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Remember, Meg, you say that all the time. I don't want to talk about that. I don't know nothing about that. You know, all that kind of stuff. Or she would just say something crazy because she didn't know what to say. So the lady has to demonstrate she can easily transition between these topics. Now, we're not looking for her to be an expert in politics or pop culture, but she needs to be able to conversate pretty well about it. Let's go to number five. Listen, guys, the woman has to at least 80% of the time be professional on the job. Now, you want me to tell you the real truth? Do you want me to tell you the real truth, y'all? None of these women, none of them are professional 100% of the time. But can I tell you an even deeper truth? Neither are you and neither am I. (laughs) On my job, when things are going my way, (laughs) it's easy for me to be professional. But let's just say I do a report in the the, way the boss didn't like it and I get called in. (laughs) It's a challenge, isn't it? Because your emotions and your feelings come. That, that's what, what makes it a challenge. You know, if we were just robots and we had an on and off button, okay, hey, we could be professional to one from the time. But none of us are perfect. That's why it's important for us as viewers to give these women slack. And guess what? Give ourselves slack. So uh, perfection shouldn't be what we're looking for in the next host. We should just be looking for someone who I think 80% of the time is professional. Listen, when you are the conservative on this show and you're up against four, you know, liberals, they're going to push back on a lot of stuff you say. And guess what? It may upset you. It may hurt your feelings even. You know, you may want to take it personally. And it's okay if you do sometimes because, again, we're not robots. But 80% of the time, we need to see that you can handle this and that you can remain professional. Remember what Megan used to do, do all the time? When they didn't agree with her, she would get visibly upset. She would turn red. Her neck especially would turn red. She would sometimes fold her arms and she would just get quiet. She wouldn't say nothing until they came back from the next commercial break. And what would happen? The women treated her like a child, like we do children on the playground. Oh, I know you're mad, but come play with us. Come talk to us. They would have to kind of pull her out of her corner. Well, if you're a grown woman, we shouldn't have to do do that. You know good and well that we're not going to all agree with you. You know good and well that the whole concept of this show is debate. And so if you can't hold your position without getting pissed off, and folding your arms and going into your corner and not talking the rest of the show, uh, I'm sorry, we don't need you there, okay? So let's move to number six. She has to see the truth and acknowledge it. What I heard Joy say during that uh, Behind the Table podcast with Meredith Vieira, she said, we are not looking to hire hire someone who believes the election is stolen. See, at this point, people who still believe the election was stolen, something going on there, okay? Uh, And I'm just going to leave it at that because what we know for a fact, and anyone can look this up, the Trump team, his legal team presented 62, yes, 62 cases before varying judges in the United States uh, claiming that the election was stolen. Some of those judges were Democrat appointed. Some were a Republican appointed. And guess what? Every time, all 62 times, those claims were rejected. The judge rejected those claims for lack of proof. (laughs) <laughs> that the election was stolen. So anybody can look it up. You can even go read the transcript, okay? So the bot on some of these cases. So the bottom line is if, if at this point somebody's coming to this show and they're a conservative and they're saying, oh, the election was still stolen, kind of like Caitlyn Jenner who said it but didn't say it. It's like, mm-mm, no, because you can't see truth nor can you acknowledge it. Finally, 
She has to be generally knowledgeable. You see, that was a huge problem with Megan. We, most of us knew that Megan didn't know what she was talking about. She was just there repeating talking points. And that's why it was so difficult for her to defend her position. I, I used to say this all the time. I used to say, Megan McCain needs to get an original thought. And a lot of people thought I was trying to shade her, but I, that's truth. I mean, listen, when thoughts and ideas and conclusions are yours or mine, that means we went through a mental process to get there. And therefore, if you question me about it, I can easily explain to you why I think a certain thing. I could say, oh, I read this article. I did this. I did that. I talked to such and such, you know, whatever. And this is why I came to this conclusion. So I can defend my, my, my position to anybody because it truly came from me. But see, when I'm just repeating what my best friend texted me last night, what my husband told me, you know, on, while he was sitting in the toilet and I was, you know, dyeing my hair in the mirror. Guess what? When you question me, I don't have a response because I don't know how they came up with it to that conclusion. I just know that's what's popular and trending to say in conservative circles. So she has to be generally knowledgeable. And I will say so far, all four women uh, as of today have been. They've been generally knowledgeable. So guys, those are the seven point, uh, that is the seven point criteria list that I'm, I'm putting up every single uh, contestant, should we say, against. Now, as we end our time together, I want to play for you what Brian Ted has said he's looking for as the executive producer and then what the women said they're looking for because this press conference they were doing or this press interview, I should say, was done and they were all together. And so let's listen to that on our way out and I will talk to you on the next podcast. We don't like to be personal with each other. And so whoever comes in will have to know that and, and um, otherwise it won't work. Well, I think we're going to look for uh, people that can hang at this table with these strong women and bring an opposing view that is also um, a good conversation and has chemistry with the rest of them. I mean, we're not looking for fights. We never are. But we just want people to have a lively, spirited debate and uh, show. I mean, the show is about different views and showing all sides of every issue. And that's what we're looking for. And respectful. We like yeah, to respectful, debate, always. but we don't like to have fights with each other. Uh, yeah.